when we moved in, we kind of just threw furniture in here. We kind of just forgot about this room and we focused on the rest of the house. I feel like a bedroom is actually one of the most important spaces of the house. And this is the first time that I'm able to interior decorate and design my room the way that I want it. We're gonna see how it goes. This is my first time doing anything like this. Unlike my normal videos on this channel, I thought it would be fun to actually like customize my room. <laughs> so you're gonna see like kind of my style come out in the real world. So I've already gone to my trusty Home Depot I've already picked a paint color. This is the reference image that I wanted to use, but I wanted to put my own spin on it. This is actually an image I found on Amazon. It was from a duvet cover that I was looking at to buy, and this is someone's actual house. So thank you to whoever posted this on Amazon. So this is the original bedroom, and this was the original color that it was when we moved in. And all this furniture is from our basement suite rental, so it all matched the previous room we lived in, but it doesn't necessarily match this house, and it's definitely due for a redo. So I start by just replacing the lampshades. These are just basic lampshades I got from Walmart. I find this shape makes the room feel a lot more modern. I want to work on this back wall first, so I have to basically get the bed out of the way, and we have to sleep in here while we're doing this bedroom reno so we can't have everything just scattered about. We still need to live in this room. And so my plan here is to build a wood paneling wall on that back wall that the bed leans against. So we picked out some boards from Home Depot and I had them custom cut down to the measurements of the wall that I selected which I believe was around six feet but I find it really useful to plan things out before you just go ahead and even draw on the wall. So I use Adobe Illustrator to do all of my planning of everything in my life now because I'm really well versed in the program. That's my process, but I know not everyone knows Illustrator. And then I take that to the wall and I actually measure out where those wood panels are going to go. And then I just proceed to cut and measure the wood based on what I think. I ended up making them a little bit shorter than what they were cut to at the store just because it was going to be a little bit too tall and I didn't realize that I needed a top board as well so I didn't account that into the original measurement. So here I am just measuring those boards out, lining them up, and just using this saw vise and hand sawing the wood because we don't have power tools yet. And then I didn't take into account either that the baseboard needed to come off, so we sacrificed this piece of baseboard and ripped it off the wall. I also took this time to remove all of the outlet coverings. And then I took time to actually paint these wood boards before applying them to the wall and I highly recommend doing this because it saved a lot of time and work and tape. And I took some time as well to paint the actual bedroom color in the corners because this wood paneling is going to line up into those corners pretty exact so if it already has paint laid down it's going to help with the painting process tenfold. And then I used this dry decks pink spackling to touch up the wall. I really like this pink spackling because you put it on pink, it dries in 15 minutes, but it dries to a white color. So you know exactly when it's dry and ready to be sanded, which is brilliant. Whoever came up with this is a pure genius. You can see even in this video time-lapse that the spots turn white. And then after that's dried, I will take a sanding sponge and sand off those spots to prep the wall for paint. And then I wiped the wall down with a damp cloth. I forgot to paint one of the boards, so I ended up painting that one in the room, which was less than ideal, but you know, it's how it goes. And this color is the Cloverdale White Chocolate, and I picked this from my Model Horse Studio, so it's the same color, and I had about half a can left from that, so it worked well. And then we also have to notch out the baseboard. 
We didn't realize this. This was a whole thing. And that was very stressful because that was sacrificing the actual baseboard on the rest of the room that we weren't intending on replacing. So uh, Chance helped me with that and he dremeled it out and it fit pretty good. And then we just air gun nailed this bottom piece in. I didn't bother using glue because it was the baseboard and it fit pretty flush to the wall already. And then we took a lot of time that I did edit out of this video to arrange all of these wood pieces and line them up and visualize and make sure that everything was working. And in doing so, taking that time again to pre-paint the edge so that I didn't need to use tape. At this point, we were pretty tired and I decided to paint a Shrek on the wall because it's a swamp. And then I was advised to use this LePage construction glue and we used that in a caulking gun and applied that to the vertical slats. We're starting with the corner slats here so that we have something to put that top beam on top of. And we just flushed that up against the wall and nail gunned it in. I would definitely recommend doing both the construction glue and the nails for a project like this because it definitely would fall off the wall otherwise. <laughs> and we just continued that basically until we finished the wall. And this took much longer than it should have. We had to rebuy some wood at a point too because some of the wood that I had originally purchased was too warpy for this. So it's hard to find really straight pieces of this, this wood because it's not finishing wood, it was actual wood. But yeah, we basically continued until we finished the wall and it was a really satisfying process to actually see it. You can see that we were using tape to hold up the beans in place, which is not recommended by construction companies. But hey, I work with what I've got and I have a lot of blue tape, so... So we were pretty excited to be done that. And then I proceeded to use this Alex Plus caulk that I was recommended and I've never used this before so it was an interesting process learning how to use it. But basically the best method I found was tape on the wall, line the caulk with a gun, use a butt of a toothbrush to smooth it and then smooth it with water because it also reacts with water. So this is my sculpting caulking 101. It ended up cracking anyways and it still isn't completely amazing, but we did what we could. And then I used some Elmer's wood filler and I tried this Wood Pro pink wood filler as well and I just filled in some of the little holes in the wood. And then I was able to get to painting, but I let all this stuff cure in between the processes so I didn't jump right into painting. Obviously I let this dry overnight. I have this little mini roller which worked amazing for this. Uh, the mini roller is life and if you don't have a mini roller when painting your house, 10 out of 10 would recommend because I've used it so much in the home renos that we've done so far. This was really satisfying because this is basically showing a better picture of what this will look like as a finished product. Uh, so I really liked the painting phase and I was eager to hop to it. And this did take a few coats because it is white and I'm going over a slightly darker color. Chance took initiative to cut the ceiling in the green paint that I chose, and this is Cloverdale Fiddlehead, which I would highly recommend. It's a very cozy green color. Because I'm short, I can't quite reach it, so he helped with that process. And then I rollered that section of the feature wall on top so that I could get a better feel for what the room was going to look like. So bye bye Shrek. It is now a real swamp. I don't have a roller pull. I read something that a roller pull is helpful, but this is DIY. We don't know what we're doing.
And then we proceeded to roll the rest of the room and you can really see that this green just makes things look so much better in all of the ways. So it was really exciting to actually be painting and getting to that point. It took some moving of furniture to reach the other corners of the room that the bed had previously been against. And I had finished off the white in second and third coat. I think I needed three coats total for that so that I could proceed to paint the rest of the bedroom. In second coating the green as well, it was kind of a boring process because it is just painting green on green and you don't really know what you're doing. So I cut fast forward through a bunch of that painting footage that I had and then I painted this little corner shelf black as well to better fit the room. And more second coating after that first coat had dried. So this project has turned into a hot mess. I spent the last three days painting. I've painted a lot of houses before, never had any issues, and for whatever reason, the paint that they sold me to do this room is not working. It's covered, and it's green, and it's the right color, but if you look closely and you sit anywhere in the room with any light, it's showing every single roller mark that I've done and I've tried everything and it's making me crazy when I walk in here and I'm not really sure what the issue is. I called the paint store and they were super gracious. They had amazing customer service. The manager was really apologetic and said that I probably was sold the wrong paint and they actually refunded me the extra can that I had to buy and they gave me a new can of the same paint that we used for the rest of the house. So I'm going to paint, have to repaint this room, which I'm not excited about, but at least she was super nice and she helped. I have to paint this room for the fourth time, going on like four days. <laughs> so then we proceed to cut again because why not? do it twice and at this point I didn't have chances help so I redid the entire room and I was pretty done at this point I was not having it but finally there was a point where I could peel the tape and be done with this reno pro tip is using a little fan brush to get in between the baseboards I also took some time to paint the vent white and then I start reattaching things and reassembling things in the way that they used to be, moving the furniture where it's supposed to be and you can really see it come together. Now my favorite touch was that I put little tiny finishing nails in each corner of the room and I was able to string these wire based fairy lights across the whole room. And then we went to assemble the shelf after everything was extra cured and good. And originally in the photo, these shelves were floating, but we decided to put actual brackets on them just to make them more sturdy. It's quite literally perfect. I, like you can't get wood more close than that. And we did a damn good job of lining this up. Chance wood stained it as well to a nice natural wood to match the floor. And I took some of that paint as well and painted in those screws white so that they weren't so obvious. Then we re-put up the curtains at that really tall height that they originally were. And these curtains were upcycled from the house move as well. And then it was time to remove the bed and remove this horrible wheel base that we had for the bed. And I bought this solid base off Amazon. We're at the point where we don't need a rolly bed anymore. And it was kind of broken and the wheels kind of just scratched the floor rather than roll. So we got rid of that. I wanted this new one and my one request was having a headboard. So I fastened that to that. And we put the bed in place their box spring and I covered the box spring with a fitted black sheet because Chance didn't like the bed skirt so here we are testing it out and I think it looks pretty cozy and I bought brand new white bed sheets to go on the bed these are just from Walmart I find them really good quality actually And 
this duvet and duvet cover I ordered on Amazon and I'm obsessed. I love the pattern. It, it's very subtle. It's not over the top. And then bringing back in those bedside tables that actually match the room now with those new lamps and it looks sweet. One of the other things that we really wanted for the room was an oversized mirror and I bought this one from Walmart and I actually got a discount on it because it was damaged. It was a good color to start with but not the right color for the room so I sanded and painted it to a black but just the the frame of it and the mirror itself was not damaged so it works really well but this thing is huge and very heavy so it took both of us to figure it out and place it properly <laughs> We also used the same carpet that we got with the house when we bought it and this carpet's really nice and plush and it matches the room as well. So we measured the wall to put up this mirror and we used these 75 pound wall anchors to fasten it to the wall. give it a good cleaning, a good wipe. And then I bought these really cute triangle shelves off of Amazon and they are hanging on little ropes and we figured out how to fasten them and twist the rope in a way so that they were flush against the wall. We didn't end up two-sided sticky taping them as well so that they were extra sturdy. And then we bought a second dresser to replace my childhood dresser and this is the Ikea mom dresser but the large one so that it would match the other Ikea dresser that came with the house. We agonized over getting better quality furniture than this but it wasn't really working out for our space and this was the best dresser to buy and it looks pretty sweet so Chance built that for us. He also took initiative to help with the decoration. So here's him building the two wood signs that I requested in a certain size, but I didn't tell him what I was gonna do. I wanted it to be a surprise, but he built these frames, stained them to the same natural finish as the wood shelf in the bedroom, and then put a white backing inside of them so that I could put my art on the inside. <laughs> my own graphics for this sign. One of them says love you more and one of them says love you most. I know it's barfable but I thought it was really cute and this kind of long style frame is really awesome and it will add some symmetry to the room. Then I was able to install those above the shelf. I thought about just leaning them on the shelf but I didn't like it as much as hanging them on the actual wall so it turned out so cute. I used a matte black vinyl so that they look professional and not cheesy. And then I printed off one of our wedding photos and put that in the center of those two signs. My favorite feature of this wall was that we had this giant green space to the left and I wanted to make my own double canvas painting for that wall. So I planned it out and bought these canvases and I wanted to paint two horses, one very obviously a mare, one very obviously a stallion and do it in my kind of messy finger painting style that I do. And so this was a really, really fun project and I must say this was a very inspiring day to be able to stay Stand in my own backyard and paint canvas and look at how green it is and it is still October. Crazy. I was very very pleased with this and I'll just let this footage run because I think it's really fun to watch the process of how to make these paintings and just see how big they are and how I don't really use a brush. I kind of just go for it with my hands. That's the freeing process that this canvas painting gives to me. I've always loved it. It doesn't match the aesthetic of the room all that much, but it's my style and it's something that I wanted and I wanted that from the beginning of the original room plan, so it was essential. This is a channel dedicated to all of my horse art, so gotta include it in every space, corner, accent of the house. <laughs> And then the final decorating could begin and 
and I put these Mr. and Mrs. signs from our wedding on the dresser in the corner. I put my little wood box that my best friend made me and I had some dried grass in a jar. I have this drawing I did of Chance and I. And I have this briar that aesthetically matches the corner. So I then also have this leather bench that has a rip in it. So I bought this fake fur from Ikea to put over top, add some texture. I added my little dog stuffy. And then my favorite thing was this wicker basket. And this is for all of my clothes. I can leave them out as I'm wearing them before I'm ready to wash them, but have them still look nice in the room so they're not laying all over the floor. On Chance's bedside, he gets a tissue box and his favorite childhood stuffed toy. I get my Darren cup and my favorite stuffed toy. And then I bought this Ikea plant that's very dangly and long and in an Ikea flower pot and that just goes up in the corner of the room. And then I was able to incorporate another briar as well who matches the aesthetic of the room and that's my very first briar ever so kind of saving for my side of the bed. And then we were able to hang Chance's cowboy hat up on the wall and this really cheesy picture I made for a gift one year of two spoons because we've been spooning since 2016. I'm so sorry. <laughs> then I have this other Ikea fake plant and I bought this really cute pottery pot from Walmart and I was able to incorporate another briar to that corner, Chance's side that matches treasured moves. And we need a trash can in our bedroom and I have this bungee hamper. It fit all in this corner of the room that was kind of awkward. And then I was able to put up my two piece painting and leave an appropriate gap. It looks so cool. And my final touch on that dresser was another Ikea long leaf plant that I could just kind of string about. Another briar, but black and white, and my white little candle that I have. Closing that door, I'm only going to allow myself to hang my black room. Then for these triangle shelves, I have these two figurines that Chance gave me from a trip to Mexico. And I'm incorporating more plants, more fake plants from Ikea in their little pots. I decided to use this fake plant in its normal black pot without a white pot and kind of strung it through the ropes of the shelf. And then I bought this really weird sculpture thing at Winners, but I like that it's an infinity sign. So there we have it. That's all it took. It was a couple months, too much money, and now it's fall, but we finished it. So that's all that matters, right? <laughs> So I would say that that was a great success. It took a little longer than we anticipated and things didn't go quite as planned in all the ways, uh, but I would say that this is a very solid home reno and we've both spent a lot of time in this room now and I feel like it's the coziest room in the house and I really like how it turned out. I feel a sense of calm when I enter here now and I love the choice of green. The green was a great idea. All the work was 100% worth it. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching and happy home renewing.